God, ask for your Spirit's help. Ask for the words to be said, to encourage us, for the words that are heard are your word. And, Father, for us to act on those. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, we've been working on a theme here, is a tool chest. That a tool chest is a place that you go and you find tools that you need to do the work that whatever you need to do. Now, some of you may think that's where they're kept. That's not always true. But you hope that when you go to the tool chest, you will find the tools that you need. Now, we just said this, that God has given us some tools as believers in Jesus Christ. He has given us a set of tools that we get to use as his people, to be his people, to know what it is to be his people, and to accomplish the work he set before us. So, we start off with a few things, beginning with the power of God. So, see if this works again. The power of God is the gospel, the message of what Jesus has done on the cross. That power is that which transforms a person from the inside out. Of all the work that God has ever done, everything that we just like get in awe of, pale in comparison to the cross. This is God's greatest power, is redeeming us and taking care of our sin. Now, he didn't leave us alone just to figure things out. He gave to every believer the Holy Spirit, okay? which is given to us to dwell in us and to bring the things of God into our life, to help us be the people of God and to do the work that he set before us. It is not some magical cord that you get zooped up on. It's not some extra superpower that you get to do amazing, miraculous things. It's that the Spirit is given to every believer to bring in God's good things into your life so that you can be the people of God and do the work that God called us. So, before we all get asphyxiated, we open up the tool chest for number three. Huh. Blueprints. The plan for Sunday School Annex and the Mission Covenant Church of Triumph, Minnesota. Triumph, that was a long time ago. Triumph, Minnesota. These are old blueprints, so if you want to see what your classroom was supposed to look like. And, and in blueprints, you can find, well, the elevations of things, how deep you're supposed to put the fitting, footings, what things... Very, Oh, there's supposed to be water drip thing in here. So they got where the steps go, the electrical is going. Everything is in here. What is amazing about... I think they changed it. I think what's amazing, you look at the blueprints, is that on piece of paper, the building is already built. It's already built and shows you how to build what you're going to do. So now I've got a couple of sets of blueprints here. Oh, this looks like it's this building. Huh, there's a church there. And how you're supposed to be seated in here. Oh, we moved that around. And, oh, you moved the men's and women's bathroom around. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah you moved that around. You know, if you have a blueprint... When you look at blueprints and those who study blueprints, everything is on here, right? Electrical, plumbing, footings, woodwork, you name everything is in here. Now imagine your contractor, who was here when the, this building was built? Okay, raise your hands, okay. Imagine your contractor came in, looked at the blueprints, and said, uh-huh, uh-huh, got it and never looked at them again. What would this place look like? It wouldn't look like this. 
You probably had more than a couple of copies. You probably had multiple copies all over. And people studied them for a while, like every day. They would look them at every part of things. They were just like, whatever they do, and where's electrical? Because everything that you need to build on, or how you're going to do it, is here. And if you only looked at it once and never paid attention to it, it would be a mess. We all know that. Here's God's blueprints. It's his blueprints. And in some ways we could say God has put in here the building he is hoping to build. He wants to build God's people. And, and the purpose why he's building us and what he would like us to accomplish is in here. Imagine what the people of God would look like if God's full blueprints are here that we looked at it just once and said, we got it. I don't have to look at it anymore. We got it. What would the people of God look like? Like we do now? <laughs> mm -hmm. We'd be totally messed up. And so today, I just want to tell you, one of the greatest gifts that God has given to you is his blueprints, his word. And it's not just for the contractor to read this and to look at it and to study it. It's for us, the people of God, to, to know what God, God's design is for us as the people of God, for you as individually, but for us as collectively, and what he would like us to accomplish. And so I'm going to have you not turn in your Bibles, but we're going to look together and we're going to study, look at Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. Now, just to let you know, Joshua is the next leader after Moses. Just so you, if you don't know who Moses and Joshua is, is that Moses has taken uh, the people out of Egypt, Israel. There's probably about a million and a half, two million people. They've wandered around the wilderness for about 40 years. They are standing on the edge of the Jordan River, and Moses dies. Okay? Um, that was God's plan. He says, you can't go into the promised land. There was other issues going on. And Joshua is going to be the guy who's going to take the people across the, the river and take over the land. This is the land I'm giving to you. And so... This is God's word to Joshua on that eve. So, we're going to say this together. I have ulterior motives, but we're going to say this together. All right? So, it's just three verses. So, there's two slides. All right? Ready? One, two, three. Be strong and courageous. Because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Ask you, did you notice anything that he repeats a few times? Be strong and courageous. Yeah, he mentions that multiple times. Yes, strong and courageous. That's where we're going for today. Strong and courageous. If you look it up in the Hebrew, if you like to do that kind of thing, it's kind of a redundancy because the words mean exactly the same thing. Both words that he's using, different words mean strong, strong, courageous, courageous. So he's trying to say, be strong, be very strong, or be courageous, very courageous. So he's like, he's, he's got to push us. Just, just go ahead, you can do it. Can you um, imagine any of you fathers, 
teaching one of your sons or daughters to do something new and they're a little bit hesitant in doing it. Okay, just think, whatever, you're a little bit hesitant. And you know they can do it, so you, you push them. And you go, you can do it, come on, you can do it, come on, keep doing it, you can do it. Maybe ice skating, maybe pounding a pole barn spike, I don't know what it is. But you, you understand it? You can do, keep going, you can do it, you can do it. You got get, you get that? That's what God's doing here. Be strong, be strong, be courageous. You can do this, you can do this. Okay, keep that in mind. That's what his idea is. He says right away, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Now, I just got to kind of say, why is he talking to uh, Joshua this way? Be strong and courageous because you will lead this people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. I, you got you to think again, where are they standing? They're standing on the edge of the river. Let's use this aisle as the river. And uh, they're actually on the, this side, on the east side. They're on the east side looking across the river and there's all the promised land. You have about a million and a half people here. And they said, this is the land, seen it. This is the land God's given you. It's ours. God's given it to you. Do you have to be really strong and courageous to just go, let's get it? You're being very hesitant here. Yeah. Just so you know, he said the land was promised to your forefathers. How long ago did he promise that? Long time ago. Uh, here's Abraham. Just want you to know in Genesis chapter 13, the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had parted him, look around from where you are to the north, to the south, the east, and west. The land that you see, I will give you into your offspring forever. And just in case that wasn't good enough, this is to Jacob, his grandson, said, there he stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and, your, and God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land in which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. I'm just saying, this is yours, Jacob. I promise you, Grandpa, and I'm, I'm giving it to you. So this is Jacob's son, Joseph. He's in the middle of Egypt, about ready to die. And then Joseph said to his brothers, I'm about to die, but God will surely come to your aid and take you out of this land, Egypt, to the land he promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's pretty exciting. Okay, so he said it at least three times. He yeah, actually more times than that, but I'm just saying, he's pretty excited. This is going to be yours. Do you, do you know how long they had to wait for that promise to come true? That's close. Four years? Close? Almost double that. Almost 700 to 750 years. They've been waiting for this promise. That's a long time. They've been waiting a long time. See, that, see that's, oh, that's a little bit longer than we are as a country, isn't it? To wait for that promise. And so sometimes that, when you wait that long, you go, that can't be real. That can't be real. So I would ask you, why would Joshua need to be strong and courageous? Hmm. A little bit of doubt there going, ah, this is not really going to happen, yeah. I'll, I'll throw out there, it's to lead the people to receive the inheritance God's way and not man's way. That God wants them to inherit it the way he wants them to inherit it, not the way they think they should. Now, those have known a little bit of history of Joshua. What are some of the unique things about Joshua in inheriting this land? First, they have to walk across a flooded river, right? It's, if I understand right from John Delancey being here, you're on one mountain, you go down this deep valley, and then you go up the other one. So it's at flood stage, so all it does is sweep away everybody that walks into it. And God says, I want you to step into that river and it'll become dry. Now that's crazy. Here's the second thing that's crazy, all you guys. You got to the final, you made it across and go, Woohoo! we made it! And Joshua says, now we're all going to get circumcised. (laughs) 
I'm fine on this side. <laughs> that was a trick play, I tell you. And then he says, okay, now it's our first military campaign. How are we going to do that? We're going to march around the city. And, and, and we're just going to walk around. We're going to do this once a day for six days. And then on the seventh day, we're going to bring the trumpets with. And we're going to blow them. <laughs> and just stand there and <laughs> the city drops. Now they think God's on their side, and so they go, hmm, we can do it our way now. And they go to the next city, and they start to whack away at the city, and they get their tushes kicked. And they go, what happened? We would just beat up the guys marching around, and they go, you guys have sinned, because what you were supposed to have done to the last place was leave none, of, leave none alive and keep none of it for yourself. And you kept some of it. Another time they went and fought and they fought and they fought and it was getting dark or it was getting darker and they knew they wouldn't make it in the dark. So they asked God to keep the sun steady. And so it says the sun stayed up longer. And so it was daylight so they could keep fighting. You see, God wanted them to inherit the land, but he wanted them to inherit it the way he wanted. He wanted to bring them into it and that they would trust him in doing it. These are a bunch of sheep herders. They knew nothing of war, and God wanted his power to be displayed through them and not them to take over everything the way they thought it should be done. And I just want to tell you that as a, as a leader there, he had to be strong and courageous to keep reminding people, we've got to do it God's way, not our way. We've got to do it God's way, not our way. We've got to do it God's way, not our way. If you have been a leader and done things like that, you've done a crazy, how exhausting do you get? How exhausted do you get? Always reminding people of doing it this way and not that way. Been there? Done that? I resonate with Joshua. Because God is speaking to just Joshua. And I resonate with it. He said, and I ask, why do I need to be courageous and strong leading God's people? Why would the Lord say, Todd, I want you to be strong and courageous? Because you're going to lead God's people to inherit the land they pr I promised to their forefathers to give them. I think the same answer. To lead God's people to receive the inheritance God's ways and not our way. I just want to tell you, it's hard. Because God's way is a lot more difficult and not the way we would do things. We have our ways of doing it. We have what we think we should be doing it. We would do it whatever. And God says, no, I want you to do it my way. I want not you to get glory. I want, I want you to do it my way so that you become more faithful to me, more trusting of me. I want you to do it my way. Now, I know that God is not giving us a land, okay? God is not giving us land. It's not about the land Israel. That's Israel. And I would say, what is... What is the God's inheritance for us? And I know some would say eternity, uh, heaven. No, it's not heaven. That's every believer. That's already a given. And you, there's nothing you can do to, to gain more of it. It's, it's a gift. And some would say, well, resurrection. Maybe that's what you're supposed to, we're aiming for. And really, no, that's part of salvation. That you're saved, you also get resurrection. So what, what is it that... that that God has asked me, be strong and courageous in leading this people. What is it that we are working towards? This comes from, from the Apostle Paul. And I would say it is to become more and more like Jesus. Paul says, but whatever were my gains, I consider loss for the sake of Christ. 
What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection, to participate in his suffering, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attain to the resurrection of the dead. Philippians chapter 3. You can go look at multiple places and look there that God's intent for us is to become more like Jesus. I just tell you that's my job description. I'm just telling you my job description. I've been called by God to be a shepherd whose purpose is to help you to inherit the promises that God has given to you. And that promise of that inheritance is to become more like Jesus. That's my job. And you can ask the question, why do you need to be strong and courageous to be a part of something that sounds fantastic? I'll let you answer that one. I resonate with Joshua. Why does it take courage and strength? Because we're going to have to do it God's way and not our way. All right. Let's say this together from Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. Ready? Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Question. Were these words just for Joshua? If they were just for Joshua, then it could be said, Joshua, you be strong and courageous because your people will be weak and cowards. Is that what he intended? For the people to be weak and cowardly in the things that are going on? No. He intended for the people to be strong and courageous. All right? And I just, here's, here we go. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to, what's that big word? Does anybody know what the word obey means? Do what you're told. Yep. It's pretty difficult to explain. Do it. Yeah, however, however you explain it, obey has the same simple thing, do it. How many of you are parents and your child did not obey you? Did you understand they disobeyed you? And you said, oh, I am so glad you disobeyed me. It makes me feel good. Any parents say that? How many kids said, I'm going to disobey my parents, whatever they tell me to do? You guys lie. <laughs> yes. Because I didn't think my parents were very smart. It goes in one ear and out the other. That's right. I just want you to know, our Father expects obedience to his word. And you're going, well, that's pretty complicated. No, it, it's really not. It's just do it. And what I appreciate about what he's telling us he says, be careful to obey some of the law or the things that you like, right? Oh, all the law that my servant Moses gave you, do not turn from 
from it to the right or the left. I find it amazing, I appreciate that, is that sometimes we get God's word and we get it and we, div and we want to wrestle with it and we want to go a little bit more this way, make it a little bit stronger, or we want to make it a little bit less so we don't have to do as much. You ever notice that? Like say, like say love your neighbor as yourself. Well, who's my neighbor, really? Are you talking the next door guy? You know, and, and well, he's kind of a jerk, so I don't really have to be nice to him because he's really a... Or do we want to get a little bit stirred? Only those who are good Dutchmen are, should I have to love and be really good to because Dutchmen, we know, if you're not Dutch, you're not much. So we just know that the way it is, Right? There you go. They owe me big. <laughs> when it comes to God's word, it's pretty simple. Obey it. Just do it. Don't make it more complicated. Don't try to take away what it's asking you to do. When he says do it, go do it. It requires courage and boldness and strength to do what God said. I'm just telling you. He expects obedience. And this is my other part that I'll just, we're going to get to, but you don't get obedience if you just read through it once and set it down. You can't obey it when you read it just once. It just doesn't happen. Okay, let's read this one more time. All right? One, two, three. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Ask you, how do you keep this on your lips? In your mouth. Read it. What? Memorize, Memorize it. How do you keep this on your, on your lips, people? Glue it. Right? Challenge is, keep this on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. So he's just given us here. He said, here's the book. I always want it always on your lips. It's always coming out of your mouth. Meditate it. It's going on in your heart day and night. Be careful to do everything written in it. Uh, I'm just going to throw this out. Read it. Read God's word. And just keep reading it, keep reading it, keep reading it. Now, I have to say, at times, it makes no sense. That's okay. Keep reading it. Keep reading it. Because I just realized that when you're reading this book, this was not written to you particularly in the 21st century. It was written to someone else that was going, at the, going through circumstances. We don't know all the windows. We don't know the places. How many can say all the names of the people and the places in the, the Bible? Ah. I wish they all had Johnson and Peterson and all that, right? But so we're reading somebody else's mail, and it's hard. But don't stop because it's hard. It takes courage and strength. Keep reading. Keep reading. You can choose anywhere where you want. You can. Just do it. Memorize it. How many have the practice of memorizing? Okay, got a few. I want to tell you that is one of the most powerful ways to keep this word on your lips and meditating in your heart and your mind. 
I, I memorize, I've been memorizing, working on some new things again. It is the most powerful thing to do. But you need to figure out your way of remembering. I've told you mine, I'll tell it again. Mine is, I'm old-fashioned, I like paper. And I will have the scripture, I usually do chapters, and I will put the whole chapter on there. I fold it up, and I put it in my pants pocket, and I go walking in the morning. Okay? And so, when I'm walking, if you, when I'm on a new passage, and you see me walking, and I have a piece of paper, I'm working on a new passage. And I will work on like one verse, two verses, and repeat, repeat. And I got that, then I'll add the next verse and repeat those three. And then I will repeat the next. I just keep repeating, repeating. I can do about a chapter in a week. Every morning, going through the same ones. Keep going over and over. And then for about two weeks, I need to just keep on that one passage and keep saying it over and over. I need to get it to stick in here. Because if I don't, Within two days, three days, it's gone. Okay? So I, I know this about myself. So i got to work on it. i got to get it in here. And when I get in here, I need to do constantly two weeks of going over and over and over it, like there, before it sinks. And it begins slowly up here, and then it sinks to here. I want you to know, though, that the, the Word of God in here and here is an amazing gift. He speaks. I was with, uh, just with, with Kay Pope yesterday, and as we prayed, just praying scripture, God's word came out, and that was the prayer. Um, it stays with you. It is an amazing thing to wake up in the middle of the night and have the passage going through your mind. It is, a, it is like, Wow. It is a challenge. It's difficult. Turn off your radio and say it as you're driving. I want to encourage you to memorize. Now, I do, I do chapters. You can do verses. I just want to encourage you. That's how we meditate on it and get it to stick on our lips. For some, for memorizing, it's going to be very difficult. And uh, this was a... A tactic that somebody used, and it was an amazing thing. They would read a passage, and I'm just going to use, uh, you can use any passage like we just did. So, be strong and courageous, because you're going to lead this people to inherit the land I promised their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. And, and so, Joshua 1, 6 through 9. And they would put a word like, be strong and courageous, and they would write it on a post-it. And they would take that post-it, and they would... Wherever they were going to be, they would knew. They put it on their mirror. They put it on their steering wheel. They put it in their office. And so that when they saw the words courageous, strong and courageous, this passage popped into their mind. Be strong and courageous. They needed reminders to help click it in. You may need reminders. And so whatever it is that they're put in there so that when you see that, you go, ah, oh, yes. Or maybe the Lord's saying, I want you to do something Write that word down and put it down in multiple places so that when you see it, you go, oh yeah, that's what God is asking me to do, that it clicks. Okay? Uh, start practicing. So, Liza, put a bunch of these uh, things together. Uh, we've been talking about it, and it's her brainchild, and it is an amazing gift of studying the book of Thessalonians together uh, as a body. And so in here is an opportunity to take sermon notes, but also beginning of a Bible study of First Thessalonians. And they're back there available, and if they run out, we can make more. But if the power of a whole body studying the same book or same portion of God's scripture is amazing. And, um, and so this is a challenge for um, an opportunity, not a challenge, an opportunity for us uh, to study the book of First Thessalonians, probably one of the first books written in the New Testament. And so if you want more information, you can talk to Liza. But uh, I want to encourage you, let's look at the book, uh, let's look at February studying the book of Thessalonians. So we get it on our word and our lips. 
We're going to be strong and courageous. Strong and courageous, why? Because God expects us to obey his word and he expects us to have it on our lips. You are going to, if you take that challenge today, say, I'm going to do that, I will bet you by tomorrow you'll have 110 different reasons why you should not be doing it. It's going to come upon you like, we just don't have the time, don't have the energy, I can't do it. Yes, I knew I, can, I could memorize the whole Bible, but I think, no, never mind. Be strong and courageous. I leave you with this word. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I want you to hear that. I've also been trying to help you memorize Joshua 1, 6 through 9. We've repeated it multiple times. You're already, you're already at a start of memorizing. Just keep saying it over and over and over and over. Because God's desire is that you become more like his son, Jesus. And he's telling us how? In here. Here's the blueprints. You get to read them. Let's pray. Gracious God, I thank you for today. I thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love. I thank you for your word. Father, I thank you that you love us so much that you don't just leave us on one side and say, hey, figure it out. But you've said, I've redeemed you and made you my own through my son. And I've given you the spirit to be as a deposit, as a guarantee, as the one who dwells with you to help you and to work through you in everything that you face. I'd like you to read and study my word. The Spirit's going to help. I'm going to help. Jesus is going to help. But study it. Get it into the head and let it drop into the heart. Father, thank you for loving us so much that you gave us your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand.